So let's talk politics. You're now watching the political segment on the weekend show. We used to know of two major parties in Nigeria, the PDP and the APC. And then in the past, we've always heard about the third force. But it's been a long time since we've experienced what we are experiencing now with the Labour Party and what we call the obedience. Some people say they are intolerant, some people say they are passionate. But the truth of the matter is, when you look at things now, it looks like there's Labour Party on one side and then there's APC and PDP constantly attacking the Labour Party. How does this reflect for the party? Is this just at the presidential level or does this cascade down to all the other positions? And we'll be having a conversation with someone from the Labour Party today and our guest is it's patrick Ori, who is rep a representative of the natural state house of assembly good morning and welcome to the show. good morning okay. mom. good morning sir good morning nigeria good morning patrick morning. um why labor party for you uh, labor party i think um we nigeria have tried pdp for 16 years um we have also tried apc and we are still in APC. And when you look at PDP, is object. APC is object. But Labour Party is the only party that have human being. So I think it is uh, the right time we try human being. Let's try people. So as opposed to Bruma Umbrella, it's now people. Uh, that, that's the logo of the Labour Party. Yeah. Um, Peter Obi seems to have a lot of um, support, um, which is growing, and mm -hmm. that's commendable. However, do you think that um, that support is generally for the Labour Party, or is it just for him as an individual? It's not just for him alone. It's not just for Labour Party, but it's for Nigeria. It's not just for Peter Obi. It's not just for Labour Party, but it's for Nigeria. Nigeria needs good government. Nigeria needs new ideas. Nigeria needs liberation. Nigeria has been held captive for a very long time. And this is the right time for Ni Nigerians are saying enough is enough. We need freedom. Not just not, not, not just Labour Party, not just me, including you. Everybody is tired. There is no sector in Nigeria that is working. Mention one sector in Nigeria that is working. None. Education is zero, power is zero, security is zero. What in Nigeria that is working, that you can hit your hand on your chest and say, this thing today is working? Nothing. Labor Party is not just a thought, it's not just a thought force. Today as we speak, Labor Party is the first force. PDP and APC has nothing to campaign for. What you see them doing, they keep talking about Peter will be, Peter will be. Peter will be just keep telling them, this is what I'm going to do for Nigeria. What is APC and PDP telling Nigeria they are going to do for us? Mm. Some of them say it's their turn. Some say because they are from the north. But he has said, don't vote me because I am from the southeast, but vote for me because I am in Nigeria. Vote for me because I am competent. Vote for me because he has the capacity. Vote for him because he said he is going to turn Nigeria from consumption nation to production nation. Every Nigeria is productive, including you yourself, myself. Even the children that are growing up are, pro are also productive. All we need, we need somebody that will change the mindset of Nigeria from consumption nation to production nation. Mm. Many people believe that uh, Peter Obi's supporters have put this savior stamp on him, that he's coming to save us. In what way is he going to be if he wins? A savior to Nigeria. Uh, records have shown when he was governor of Anambra. So one thing he have always told Nigerians is, when whatever he said, he said, "Go and verify." Whatever he comes to the media to talk to people, we tell Nigeria, "Go and verify." That means he has, from what he has said, has shown that he has what it takes to give Nigeria a new leaf. All what is asking, all what we are asking Nigeria. Let us rally around him and support him. I can assure you that after 2023 general election, Nigeria will become a place where people will want to come and invest, where people can go anytime, do their business, with their, feel free to do whatever they want to do. Well, you say um, some of his um, attributes, rather, can be linked to him being, or rather, when he was uh, the former governor of Anambra. But Tinubu was also governor of Lagos State. So what makes Peter Obi 
stand out compared to another candidate, Tinubu? Yeah, Tinubu was governor of Lagos State. And he also had a good record as well. He also well. have a good record. But um, Tinubu has not come out to tell Nigeria, when I was a governor, these are my records. Go and verify. If there is no history, there will be no future. It is the history that leads us to where we are going to. Let him tell Nigeria, go on, let him bring out his profile. Let Nigeria see his profile. I'm sure you follow the flag of APC in our, in our just some few days ago. Yes. See, there are four things. For you to be a leader, there are four things. One is the social well-being, the physical well-being, the, um, the physical well-being, the social well-being, the environmental well-being. Let us look at this tree. Look at what he said. He wanted to say, he said, God bless Nigeria. And the next thing he said, God bless P, D. When people shout and say A, P, C. That means mentally, he's not, he, he does not have the capacity. We are not looking at the past. We are looking at present. So for you to have the capacity, we need somebody that is energetic, somebody that is intelligent, Somebody that have the, somebody that have conscience, somebody that have what it takes. Some, somebody that if he tell you white, when you go back and check, it, it will still be white. Not somebody that people will be speaking for him. Have you ever seen the spokesperson for APC and PDP talking about what they are going to do? All they do is just about attacking Peter Obi. Let them tell Nigeria what they are going to do. If Nigeria is a country, Nigeria is a country where they unqualify are governing the qualified people. Look at how much they spend during their primaries. That money alone would have been enough to put our educational system in place. That would have been enough to give us the best health, the best health facilities. That would have been a lot to put our security in place. If you can spend such money alone in your primaries in buying form, what do you think will happen when such people get into government? Who are the sponsors of those people? So we need somebody that Nigeria needs. And the person Nigeria needs is Peter Obi. Peter Obi is not just, it's a movement. If Peter Obi decides today that he's not contesting again, the Labour Party will still win an election because it's a divine project. At a time, Nigeria needs a leader. And God has decided to give us a man that is as humble, a man that is as qualified, as His Excellency, by the grace of God, the incoming President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, uh, Peter Grigori Obi. Let's talk about you. Um, you're running for office under the Labour Party in Nasrawa State. Yes, sir. And you've spoken about antecedents and precedents and what people have done in the past. What are you running on? What, why should people vote for you? What are your <laughs> own antecedents? Yeah, by the grace of God, I'm the candidate for Labour Party. Cairo Gitata constituency, Nassau State House of Assembly. Um, by the grace of God, I've been able to create a relationship between myself and the people. And um, I've come to, when you look at Nassau, Cairo local government where we reside, Cairo local government generates 70% of the revenue generated in Nassau State. But there is nothing to show that this is what the people of Cairo are benefiting from Nassau State Government. Now, statistics also have shown that the revenue generated in Lafia in a month is what is generated in Massacre Market on a Friday, just one Friday. And the only thing the APC government could do for the people of Cairo is to give us a motor park, which they call the terminal bus stop. That means the people of Cairo are not qualified to have any developmental project except a motor park. So and I, I believe that, one, why people should vote for me, competence, two, capacity, three, the ability to formulate laws that would change the face of not just Nasser, but Nigeria as a whole. All I'm asking the people is the opportunity, the chance to liberate them. Okay, are there projects that you are looking on embarking on when you win your election? Yeah, I, by the grace of God, I'm a proud, I'm a professional teacher. Yeah, I still, I'm still in, in the field. Uh, the educational system is zero. 
in as much as Cairo and Nassau is concerned. There's a community we visited in Kefishano. Uh, even presently, now as we speak, the teachers sit under a mango tree. It's just a 25 minute drive from, from uh, Kefi to the community where the senator, the national chairman of APC, is coming from. That is the sanitarian zone. The teachers sit under a mango tree. The, the students are still sharing the same class with goats, with animals. If you go there, once it's raining, children don't go to school. One, the way that the cloud change, changes, that it's going to rain, children will go back home because the roof is the, the roof are leaking. And um, by the grace of God, we are going to fix the educational structure in Nassau State. We are going to make sure that our people are empowered. They say if you want to build a nation, build a woman. If one woman is empowered, you have empowered the entire nation. We are going to make sure that our youth have something to do. Presently now, I've, I've not been to the house, I've not entered the house, I've written six bills. Presently now, each of those bills, if they pass into law, it's going to, one of them is going to create direct or indirect jobs, 7,000 plus. So all I need is for me to lobby, uh, lobby my friends that are in the State House of Assembly so that this bill will pass into law. It will create a forum where our people will have something to do. We will not be depending on the politician again. Mm. Talking about um, jobs, unemployment is at, a, at an all-time high in Nigeria. You just said that if some of these bills come to pass, it would help improve um, the unemployment situation and make it better. Um, with your party, um, what do you think needs to be done to fix the unemployment issues in Nigeria? Um, Tinibar has spoken about agriculture, sending people to the farms, getting 50 million youths into the army. What do you think the Labour Party will do different, especially being a Labour Party, which is more like a unionized type um, ideology party? Now, one thing I want to let you know about, let me use Nasrawa my, as my state. Um, Nasrawa is number one production of ginger in Nigeria. But today, there is no place in Nasrawa that ginger is being cultivated. We will make sure that our people go back into farming. We will encourage them. Now, Nasrawa, um, our local government, Doma, Kitata, have one of the best soil for rice production. We will make sure that our people are encouraged to go into mechanized farming. Our candidates are qualified. The governorship candidate is one of the youngest governor. He has capacity. The three senatorial candidates have capacity. What I'm discussing with them now is to see how we create um, synergy where we can work as a team. It's not something that the governor alone can do. It's not something that the House of Rep member can do or the senatorial candidate alone can do. By the time we need, all of us will come together see how we encourage our people to go into farming. One, you don't tell people to go to farm when the farm is not secure. We'll make sure that the national state is as secure as the best place in the world. They will make sure that when people are going to farm, they'll go to farm without fear of the, of, of the unknown. And also make sure that we'll give, we, we are going to subsidize the state so that at the end of it, farmers will not be complaining. So once um, we can carry 30% of the farmers in national state and empower them, it will reduce unemployment. We also make sure that, that let's, let's look at Cairo. Cairo is the closest city to Abuja. We have the international market. That is supposed to be a place where the, where the whole world, all are supposed to come to invest. With that market, Nigeria is supposed to be generating revenue from there that the state will also be having a percentage from. Now, when we come into government, we will transform the face of that market, make it an international standard where businessmen all over the world will come to that place. As a result of that, it will create more jobs where our people will be employed. Now, we we'll try to see how we'll, we are also going to develop Cairo. Cairo should be compared with Abuja, in terms of everything. So with that, it will also reduce unemployment in Nassau State. Mm. So apart from agriculture, what else? Because we hear agriculture from every single politician. What else can we do? Because we have a lot 
of resources. We have a lot of human power also here in Nigeria. So apart from agriculture, what else? Vocational skills. Vocational skills. We, I have my, my son. Most of the time when I observe him, I, I see him doing things. All we need to do is for us to discover talent, encourage them. Artists, encourage them. Those people you see on the street, footballers, we have to discover them. Most of these young boys, a son of a senator doesn't play football. A son of a politician does not play football. But it is the poor man children that play football. We are going to create a platform where our youth will be encouraged to go into, um, into sport. As a result of that, it will help to reduce unemployment. There are other things. You know, it's not everything we need to <laughs> expose now, so that, uh, mm. yeah. You, you guys keep saying, and I hear this a lot with the Labour Party, it's not everything we need to say. These campaigns are open, this is the time to share um, what you plan mm -hmm. to do and uh, how, and we will continue to hold all of you people running accountable mm. and responsible for what you have promised and what you say you'll do. All the best in your election, um, Patrick. Thank you. Didi, do you have a PVC? Oh, yes. Good. For people <laughs> who registered um, in the Continuous Voters Registration, INEC has released the list. You can go online to the INEC um. site to check and see if you are registered. It's about time for people. Some people have started collecting their cards, but it's also important that you check to be sure mm. you're on the register. And also check in case there are any anomalies so that INEC can correct it before the election so that we don't cry wolf. That's the much we can take on today's episode of The Weekend Show. My name is Andy Madaki. You can follow me on all social media platforms at Andy Madaki on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also follow Didi. Yes, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Didi underscore. You can follow The Weekend Show at Weekend Show NG on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Also, all our episodes are also on um, YouTube, so you can check out our YouTube page, Weekend Show NG, for previous episodes and also today's episode. For now, that's all we, can, we have for you. Um, do have a blessed weekend and a blessed week.